Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to this course on React Native. Now, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Also, you can add me on Twitter or GitHub, or you can send me an email if you have any specific questions. Now, what we'll be learning? So we'll be using the React Native CLI to create a new React Native project. And we'll look at how we can create an optimal folder structure that can help us to create a project that can be easily managed. Also, we'll look into how to use the React Navigation 5 such that we can create navigation through our apps so users can move between screens in the app. And also, we'll implement an authentication flow where we'll have some screens that will show to a user who is not logged in and then other screens that will show only when a user is logged in. So we'll also learn how to use the context API to manage our state. So this is a React feature that gives us a way to get global state management something that if you've heard of tools like Redux would give you, but we'll be able to do that now using the context API. All right, so we'll also use Axios. So Axios is an HTTP library. So we'll be looking into how to use it effectively, creating instances and reusing them, creating interceptors to be able to maybe log out a user if their token expires. So we will be exploring their React Native components. So these are the components that come out of the box in React Native. Now we don't have many, but we'll be looking at the ones that are available. And we'll also be looking into how to use the ones that React Native gives us to create custom ones that, can, that we'll be using to build our sample app. Now we'll also look into how to create launcher icons and splash screens. Also, we'll see how to use the camera and pickers, cropping images. We'll also look into how to set up Firebase. Now, these days, Firebase is becoming really popular in mobile apps. And you can actually use Firebase as a complete backend for your app. So we'll look at how to set it up to work with our project. Now, in our specific project, we'll be using it only to store photos for our contacts. All right, so you'll also be able to pick up some extra JavaScript and some modern React, as everything we'll do will be using the newest React features and also the newest features in JavaScript. Okay, so what you need to know before you get started, I would say that you need only some basic React. If you know how to state props, components work, then you will be fine. Also, so if you have some native mobile app development background, then that's really good to have and it's gonna help you understand things really quickly but it's not really mandatory to have so if you don't have that you'll be able to pick up real fine that's why i didn't even include this here so what we'll build is we'll build a contact listings application where we'll have some screens where a user can log in uh, create an account log in and also have some screens that a user will use to like create contacts view them in a list and that kind of thing so the app we'll build will be connecting to this API. So this is a basic contact listings REST API that we built before in the previous series. I will leave the link for those series in the, in the description if you want to learn how we build this. Okay, so this is what we'll be consuming. The registration endpoint, login, contacts, details, uh, and basically the contact CRUD. Okay, so here I have an Android, an Android that's running on my physical device. And I'm emulating it to show on my computer screen using a tool called Visor. So if you guys want to have that, you can quickly install Visor. I'm on a Mac, but there is one for Windows. If you don't find any, there is a Chrome extension that you can use. So when you install it, you can quickly plug in your Android device, turn on USB debugging, and then you will be able to see it connect to the device and it can quickly show the device on the on your computer screen if you want to do that. Also here I have an iPhone 11. So this is a, an iPhone simulator that uh, iOS gives us that we can use that we can use to test and develop our application. Now you'll notice that uh, here we have a list of contacts. Now on this screen we can be able to add a new contact and here when we click there you can see that we have this model that we'll be creating where we have like some basic user information here we'll have a navigation drawer that we can open or close by clicking here. So here we'll also create um, this custom drawer content component and link to different screens like this. So this will be a setting screen. So we'll implement like a sort order. So here you see we ha will have a way for user to sort the contacts. So mostly here we'll be learning about like, like how to quickly create this kind of layout. It's really simple. So we need to look into the different tools we have at our disposal to be able to create something like that. Also, if you look at like the detail component, 
you see we have like a loader that comes up then we have a picture which loads so we can quickly track the state of the picture loading so we can show maybe a loading indicator when it's loading we can show maybe an error if the component if the picture was not able to be loaded and yeah so here you can delete the contact actually so we'll be looking to upgrade all these this kind of layout this will be totally flexbox then on the edit you see that you can come here you find the contents are there we have the we have this switch here switch components that we, that we can use to manage like booleans so here we also have like a country picker i'll show you how to use some component that you can use to to pick countries so yeah so here we'll be able to choose files from the device so i can come over here and choose a picture we'll implement this way of cropping so we can crop we can specify even the dimensions we want the user to crop at and then they can choose the picture and it will be added here and it should be saved once we we save so if i click submit you see that it saves it's disabled then it's saving and uh, when everything is good it's gonna come and it updates the picture okay so right here let me see if we have some more we'll create this like floating action button so here it's basically the same thing the form will initially be empty but when we are editing it's gonna be different so I'm gonna log out here. So when I log out, we get this alert component. So we're gonna be seeing how to use this. So you see this is a native one on the iOS. Now on the Android, it's gonna be different. Let me see if I can bring up my device. Oh, I'm logged out here. So right now, I can decide to log out like this and you'll see that we come to this screen. My picture is not loading just because my server is off, but that doesn't matter at the moment. So also, these screens here see if we try to submit without filling in stuff we get the errors we show them properly here so if we do this then i'm gonna click submit so you see when i click submit our errors go away and we get when we get more errors from the server we show them corresponding so now we can go ahead and uh, create our user so it's just gonna be test.gmail.com then let's change the username to johnny okay so now we can submit and you see the account is created now we are going to be creating this message component you see like this one is uh, is blue so we'll create like a component where we can say okay show us an error one and it shows it in red and that kind of thing so when we create you see that the name is preferred that's because we are using the context api so this component on this screen is able to read from the state that was created in another screen so we're using the context api and we can globally read state throughout any screen in the application so here you see we have the username which is stored in our global store using the context api now here we can log in we'll create these components now right here you see we have this show hide uh, feature that we'll implement so when i put let's say a user that's not there you see that we get this kind of error so i'll show you how to like implement like components that give you a way to like retry something so here if i put a correct one so let's hide my password then click submit and you see that now we are logged in our picture has load and we can basically use our application like we would normally so this is going to be it for the video in the next part i'm going to come in we create the project structure and also setup navigation so thanks guys for watching and i'll talk to you soon